Okay, so I just want to talk very briefly about temperature scales. Um, so here are three, the three temperature scales, Fahrenheit, Celsius, and Kelvin. And so you'll notice here the Kelvin scale is absolute. So there is such a thing as absolute zero. In so far, we've never been able to get absolute zero. We've been able to get to a fraction of a Kelvin, I think about one millionth of a Kelvin, but we've never actually been able to achieve absolute zero Kelvin. We'll speak a lot more about what absolute zero Kelvin means throughout the semester, but for now I just want you to recognize um, the Kelvin scale does have an absolute minimum bottom. You can't go any lower than that. The equivalent temperature of that on the Celsius scale is minus 273 Celsius, and the equivalent temperature of that on the Fahrenheit scale is minus 459. So when you say something is absolute zero, I think that sounds a lot better than like negative 459, because why not negative 460 or negative 458, right? So this absolute zero makes the Kelvin scale much more um, universal, okay? So, and if you compare those numbers as we go through, you can see the things that are interesting to you. I mostly want to talk about then how you convert in the equations, all right? So if you think about this, if absolute zero Kelvin is negative 273, then do a little algebra, right? And you'll find that you can convert Kelvin to Celsius by just saying the Celsius temperature plus 273, okay? Um, and I've put this in a box and I put this as a check mark because I want you to memorize this. I want you to know how to convert something to Kelvin from Celsius. So for example, if the Celsius temperature is 25, uh, let's say 0 0.00, which we note as room temperature, even though 25 is kind of hot for room temperature, I think 20 or 21 is much more appropriate for room temperature, but scientifically we've defined 25.00 as room temp. So that means in Kelvin, and look at this, significant rules with addition, right? 25.00, two decimal places, plus 273.15, two decimal places, equals 298.15. But if I gave you like 25 degrees Celsius and asked you to convert it to Kelvin, then look, there's no decimal places. So that means it would only be 298 Kelvin. Now, what about conversions from Fahrenheit to Celsius? Um, you, I, you're going to have to do a couple of these examples in your homework. I'm not going to have you memorize these formulas, um, but I think it is useful to be able to enter convert. Um, and mostly, since we know, you know, we're typically programmed for the Fahrenheit temperature, right? Recognize how to do this easily, like on a scientific calculator, right? So if it's 80 degrees today, which would be a very hot day in Humboldt, um, you know, 80 degrees Fahrenheit minus 32, and then that's times 5 ninths. So times 5 divided by 9, um, that's 26.7, okay? So what about, what's 25 Celsius in Fahrenheit, okay? So 25 Celsius in Fahrenheit, I can say 25, and I can say times 9 divided by 5 plus 32, and that's 77 Fahrenheit, that'd be kind of warm. That'd be a warm room if you were sitting in a 77 degree room. Okay. So be able to use these formulas. You don't have to memorize these two, but I do want you to memorize the Kelvin Celsius formula.